Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and today we are learning about Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a collection of radio waves that connect your devices to your router and thereby the internet. A wireless router is used to broadcast your local area network or LAN over these radio waves. Radio waves are used to transmit data in binary format between your devices and your router. There are many different versions of Wi-Fi that have improved over time, and these protocols have been defined by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or IEEE, under the 802.11 family versioning. And this development has been overseen by a group called the Wi-Fi Alliance. Most popular version of Wi-Fi is currently Wi-Fi 5, or 802.11ac. However, Wi-Fi 6, or 802.11ax, has been released as of February 2019. Now these new routers and new devices are slowly adopting these new protocols and as you buy more devices over time you'll slowly get these new rich benefits of Wi-Fi 6. Now you must be curious where Wi-Fi comes from. Well Wi-Fi is a play on the word of hi-fi or high fidelity where Wi-Fi is supposed to be wireless fidelity however that moniker is not officially adopted. Wi-Fi comes in different radio waves specifically 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands. Hertz is a unit of measurement for a cycle, in this case waves per second. It describes the size of a wave but also the speed. 2.4 gigahertz waves are longer but slower, while 5 gigahertz waves are faster but shorter. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means that 2.4 gigahertz waves result in a slower network speed but a larger covering Wi-Fi network while 5 gigahertz results in a faster network or internet speed, but a much smaller network coverage. Generally, 5 gigahertz is more desirable than 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz also has more interference with other devices in your house, such as a microwave, a doorbell, or anything that emits a radio wave, because it's a very common radio frequency that has been used over time. So generally with this, you're gonna have more interference and dropped connections, and therefore have a less reliable Wi-Fi connection. Now to help combat this, Wi-Fi radio waves, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, have something called channels. 2.4 gigahertz has 11 channels and 5 gigahertz has 23 channels. These channels help provide a reliable connection to your router so that you're not using the same channel as other Wi-Fi networks or other devices in your home. A channel you can think of is as a slice of the wave. It's somewhere on a different portion of the wave that you're connecting your device to. And if no one else is connected to it, or if no other devices are broadcasting in that channel, you're likely to have a better, more reliable connection. Now I can't say that Wi-Fi channels always solve your problem of a reliable connection, because oftentimes you'll have walls, doors, or other physical objects in your home that degrade your Wi-Fi signal significantly. And this usually results in dead zones where you can't get Wi-Fi or internet access in your home. So how do you combat this? Well, you can buy something called a mesh Wi-Fi system. Briefly, mesh Wi-Fi expands the normal capability of Wi-Fi by taking the Wi-Fi waves that come from your main router and rebroadcasting them as they're reached, therefore increasing the coverage of your Wi-Fi network. Simply, you place your Wi-Fi nodes in different areas of your home that are guided to you by using an application and they'll rebroadcast the signal and thereby increasing your Wi-Fi coverage. Wi-Fi 5 is most commonly secured by Wi-Fi Protected Access 2, or WPA2 security protocol. WPA2 works by using your Wi-Fi password, or pre-shared key, or PSK, and uses that to encrypt the connection between your device and the router. This works by creating a four-way handshake between the device and the router. First, it generates something called a pairwise master key, or PMK, using the PSK and the Wi-Fi name, or set service ID, or SSID. Then with this pairwise master key, a pairwise transient key is created, or PTK, also known as a session key. This key is then used to encrypt the communications. This ensures that each device on the network gets its own separate, unique encrypted connection, one that other devices cannot read. Wi-Fi has also gotten better with Wi-Fi 6. First, Wi-Fi 6 increases the theoretical max speed to 9.6 gigabytes per second, up from 3.5 gigabytes per second. 
While most devices cannot reach 9.6 gigabytes per second on their own, what this does is increases the theoretical max for the whole network, meaning other devices on your network are not limited to a slower speed. So collectively, they can all reach 9.6 gigabytes per second. Second, something called multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, or MUMIO, has now increased to support eight devices as opposed to four. What MUMIO means is it allows your router to communicate with up to eight devices at one time as opposed to four devices. This is like getting more waiters at a restaurant where you have eight waiters as opposed to four, meaning you're able to have eight waiters deliver food to more tables rather than just four waiters. Additionally, there's something new called Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access, or OFDMA. What OFDMA does is it supports one transmission communicating to multiple devices at the same time. You can think of this as having one waiter drop off food to more than one table. Both of these advancements will increase the reliability of your connections to your router, but also help increase the speed of it, and therefore increasing the overall performance of your Wi-Fi devices on your network. Lastly, we have a couple things. We have something called target wait time. What target wait time does is it allows your devices to schedule check-ins with the router. Now this feature is not going to show much benefit to laptops and smartphones because those check in with the router often. But if you get an IoT device, let's say a battery powered smoke detector, well this target wait time will help improve the battery limit of the smart smoke detector because it's not constantly checking in as it is now on Wi-Fi 5. Lastly, Wi-Fi 6 also introduces something called Easy QR Connect. What this does is it allows you to connect IoT devices that don't have a screen by using a QR code. Simply, if you have an application that accompanies this smart IoT device, you can scan that code and it'll automatically connect your device to the network securely. Now, in order to get the full benefit of Wi-Fi 6, you'll need both your smart devices and your router to support Wi-Fi 6, but just one alone will not cut it. Although you may be inclined to get a Wi-Fi 6 router sooner, which you can see marginal improvements there. Lastly, security is also improved with Wi-Fi 6, most notably now with WPA3. WPA3 introduces two new security concepts that will protect you. One is the destruction of offline password guessing attacks. What this means is that anytime someone steals your encrypted Wi-Fi data and they try and use that to brute force or guess your password, they only have one chance to do it because after one moment of guessing, it'll destroy that data that they captured and therefore they cannot do any more guesses. Second is something called forward secrecy. What forward secrecy does is it re-encrypts your connection between the device and the router every few minutes. Now this is important because if an encryption key is ever compromised, the only data that is potentially compromised is that data within that few minute span that was encrypted with that one encryption key. So any data before that session or any data after that session is not compromised because they're using different encryption keys. And that about covers it for this video. Thank you guys so much for following me on this journey. I really appreciate it. If you like this video and really got some educational value out of it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this content or anything around IT tools and technology tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't forget when another video comes out. Thanks again, guys, and we'll keep in touch.